Hello everyone. Today I'll be reacting to your spiciest takes about Dune. Did I make this video when I stayed up one night way too late and had the idea of like, oh my gosh, spice, spicy takes? Yeah. And it's not even that original of a pun. I don't know if this is spicy, but I like the movie's version of the story more. Also, many people told me the first Dune book works fine as a standalone story before I read it, and I do not agree. Um, I don't know if I agree with this one. I think that this is absolutely a bad take for the first Dune book, uh, Dune movie, sorry. But I guess you could argue that the second Dune movie does like have that Bricknick uh, pace. If that's kind of what you're into more, then I could see you saying that you enjoyed Dune part two more than the second half of the book. And when it comes to Dune working as a standalone, I think it does, but I also think that the ending is very, it's just resolved very fast. I also used the Tutu Ramble Discord for this, so shout out to you guys. Chapter House Dune is a top three Dune book, and Miles Tegg is the best sci-fi character of all time. I haven't actually read on yet, but this kind of brings me to what a bunch of people in my comments were saying, that some of them do want me to read on and finish, some people want me to try the Brian Herbert books, so I decided that I'll compromise and I'll read all the way through the last Dune book. I don't know when that video is going to come because those are big books, but something to look out for. If you see me squinting a lot, it's because the sun is killing me and my fringe is falling in my eyes. The next takes are all about Dune Messiah. Dune Messiah is better than Dune. The ending of Messiah with Paul is better than any moment that happens in the entirety of the first book. But then we have Cody who says that Dune Messiah could have been better because it was kind of difficult for him to understand what was happening because of the way it was written and like it's just an epilogue so. And yeah, I 100% agree. As you all know, I think that Dune Messiah is the weakest by far. A lot of people came at me for that, but you know what? I'm just a girl. I'm just a girl. And yeah, I truly don't think that Dune Messiah has anywhere nearly as interesting characters. The plot is really bland for most of it. It does pick up a little bit at the end and the ending scene is fantastic, but I, I just really don't think there's any comparison. Beef swelling should be in the dictionary. Don't know if that's a spicy take though. I agree. The best adaptation in terms of story is the sci-fi miniseries Dune and Children of Dune, especially Children. It has James McAvoy giving a very good performance as Leto II. I really, really want to watch that. I also love James McAvoy, so I, uh, yeah, I really need to get around to that soon. Denny V's adaptations are sheer genius, though they present significant changes from the book. I think I like them better, right on down the line. We also have a take saying that the Dune movie adaptations are just as good as the Lord of the Rings movies, if not better. Um, I feel like the Dune movie, my enjoyment of them was increased by the fact that I read the book because I really enjoyed the more philosophical uh, parts of the book. I think that some of it like had to be lost in the adaptation just because like you just can't make like a six hour movie and like it was already sp split into two. But I do think that it is comparable to Lord of the Rings. I don't know if I like it as much as the Lord of the Rings movies personally, but I think both of them were definitely created by people who were very passionate about the IP, very passionate and understanding of why other people felt this passion for it. And they were able to translate it into this separate medium, which is something that the Witcher showrunners never learned. Dune crawled so Red Rising could sprint. I read Red Rising when I was like 13, so I'll be rereading it when the final book comes out. I enjoyed it, but I definitely liked Dune more, at least from what I remember. Maybe I was just too dumb at 13 to understand Red Rising, I don't know. It makes no sense to compare Dune to Star Wars because of the themes. This is from my friend. I'm not really in too deep um, with Star Wars lore, so I'm not like too sure exactly like how they compare. That being said, we did have an hour long phone call yesterday where this friend went on a rant and she was saying how Dune has this very lofty goal of subverting the hero, whereas Star Wars just wanted to do like a very good interpretation of the hero's journey. Look, I definitely think they can be compared in some aspects, but I think when you do compare them, you do kind of have to keep in mind that the goals for these two stories were totally different. I, I know you're gonna leave a very intense comment, so. I'm waiting for that. Not that spicy, but the Princess Irulan passages before the chapters just killed the whole suspense. I 
Okay, they do kill the suspense, but I touched upon this briefly in my Dune video, but I love that they are there because it's intentional. They shift the focus from like the actual plot and what is actually happening and makes you think about why is it happening? It's also exacerbated or influenced, I guess, by the omniscient third person perspective and together with the passages, like it just forces you to think so much more about like what is actually happening because it divorces you from the suspense. Yeah, and it just frustrates me because so many people seem to think this. Dune can be read as a pretty compelling trans allegory. Paul is the man who is always meant to be a woman. Jessica's supposed to produce a female heir. Paul harnesses the voice, a skill reserved for the Bene Gesserit. And I'm sure there are more specific examples, but I'm tired. The general idea of an imposed identity that Paul rejects in favor of doing what feels right to him might be a reach, I don't know. I'm not too sure about this one because I feel like the point is that Jessica Jessica influences like her genes to make Paul into a, bo a boy. And I think that the Kwisatz Haderach is playing on the idea of uh, the Bene Gesserit have like these memories of all the women uh, before them because of the mitochondrial DNA, which if you don't know is inherited basically from your mother. Males don't have the same kind of lineage, except, I don't know, I guess the Y chromosome, and that the Quisitatarak is going to be like the special person who is able to access um, all all these memories. But I don't know, maybe, maybe there is a point to be made there about like the fact that Paul initially uh, was, because of the Bene Gesserit plan, they were telling Jessica to have a girl and she just changed that. So maybe that influenced why he is a Kwisatz Haderach. I don't know. Um, I'd love it if you could expand on this in the comment section because I'd really like to uh, hear more of your thoughts. Dune, the movie specifically, regained relevance due to the current geopolitical climate. Every group sees themselves as the oppressed and each craves an all-knowing, all-seeing leader to rise up for them to follow because that is the human condition. Also, I really enjoy your content. Thank you! This hot take is definitely going to cause a stir in the comments. I think that there is some truth uh, to be had there, though I wouldn't say that like all the oppressed groups, whether they are or not, um, seek like a leader to speak for them. And also the fact is that as we all know, Dune is subverting the point of like trusting charismatic leaders. So I guess that kind of subverts your point. But again, if you'd love to like kind of expand on your thoughts in the comments, I'd, I'd love to read that. Edric is the hottest character in the Dune universe. Curtis, that's not a spicy take. If my boy isn't a mutated human that looks like a fish in a spice tank with um, a vagina for a mouth, I don't want him. <laughs> so yeah, Edric is my king. The ending of the first book, History Will Call Us Wives, is one of the best endings to a book, and the movie, however brilliant an adaptation it was, was a failure for not recognizing that. Um, okay, so two two things. I think that for the movie, um, because they kind of gave Chani a little bit of a different role, I don't think that that would have suited and especially since I don't think that she and Jessica had that relationship to have that conversation. However, I actually had a conversation about it with one of my uh, friends who uh, really likes Dune and he was saying that, oh, that ending is so sexist. And I was like, what? Because the way I interpreted it was Jessica ch telling Chani, you are going to be safe. Like you will be the love of his life. He is just marrying Irulan to put himself in the position where he can have all this power and recognition and stuff, but you will serve the same role as I did for Duke Leto. I was the mastermind behind everything, but because I was never his wife, that protected me because I wasn't, I didn't have like a target on my back. But in the long run, because of your influence, you will be remembered as the de facto wife. And so I thought that was very interesting. Also, why would an author who makes women like this very powerful and um, intriguing, morally great group um, as the Bene Gesserit, why would he suddenly just subvert that and be like, mm, actually, misogyny, Ooh, you know, sprinkled in at the end. I just don't think that suits. So I disagree with everyone who thinks it's misogynist or whatever, because like, it, it just, it's just not like re reread it. <laughs> Anyways, 
those were your hot takes about Dune. Thank you so much for sharing them with me. And I can't wait to see what you guys think of them in the comment section. If you have any other hot takes that you'd like to share, let me know. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!